Hey guys, today I want to do a video specifically focused for moms of boys. I have two older sisters and three little brothers. So my mom raised four boys that were all uh, about two years apart. So pretty close. And um, I mean, you know, I'm kind of biased, but I think she did a pretty good job overall. And <laughs> now my, my wife and I are in the process of raising two boys, two girls. And one of the things that comes up a lot in conversation with my wife is just the differences between boys and girls and how it's it's sometimes a lot easier for me as a dad to understand what the boys need or what they're kind of what they're going through. And so there's been some books that have been really helpful for her in understanding kind of how they're wired and, and what they what they need, what they're looking for, what they're going through and all that. So I have six books that I want to run through pretty quick today um, in honor of Mother's Day, three nonfiction books and three fiction books that I think any mom could read and will help you have a better understanding of how your boys are wired and how they think and what they need from you as a mom. So we're going to start with the fiction ones. These are ones that uh, I think you should read by yourself, but then also at age appropriate times for your kids. Uh, definitely read them out loud or read them with your sons. They're they're really, really great. So the first one that I have is one of my favorite novels of all time, and it's The Call of the Wild. This book, my, I gave this book to my mom, and, and mom was like, I didn't really like it. Like, I feel like that's just like a book for, for boys because it's just kind of violent and, you know, like whatever. And I was like, yes, like this is. And the reason you should read this book is because this book delves into the the wildness inside of boys and there's a there's a part inside of men that is not civilized and that yearns for the wild and yearns to be tested and yearns to to fight and earn a place and yearns to prove that you have what it takes to survive in a really really harsh world. And this is a book about a dog, but it does that so beautifully. This is the book that Jack London wrote talking about a civilized dog becoming wild. Um, for bonus, you could also go read White Fang, which is a book about a wild dog becoming civilized, um, which has some really, really cool, interesting points in it as well. But this book is super helpful in, in kind of a big picture view of at a certain point, what is most likely going to happen with your sons, which is this, this stirring up of the spirit that wants to be tested and that wants to prove themselves in in a harsh world and a harsh environment. And so, yeah, it's it's short, it's easy, it's really well written. It's a really great story. Even with my mom, you know, being like, I just like because I, mean, I was like, I love this book, you know. And she's like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. But even with that, she was like, it was still really enjoyable, and I liked it. So that's the first one that I would say. The next one that I would say is the Green Ember series by S.D. Smith. This, there's four of these books, and this series is excellent at walking through the arc of a young boy turning into a young man and becoming a warrior and growing up in all of that, right? This is obviously a story about rabbits, um, but Pickett and his sister, when they start, are pretty young, and especially in this first book, it does a great job just helping you kind of understand what what's going on in this young boy's mind as he's dealing with thinking and feeling like he's older and more mature than he really is, but knowing he's not good enough yet, but wanting to be good enough, but not being strong enough, but wanting to be strong enough, but not being brave, but wanting to be brave, but uh, you know, not being as as uh, as good of a warrior as these other guys, but wanting to be as good of a warrior, and not protecting his sister, but wanting to protect his sister, and this this great tension that just hit me so hard from thinking about being at that age where it's like I I'm so stuck in this in between of. I, I don't do what I want to do, and I do do what I don't want to do. The tension of it is so good to help you understand how when you're at that young of an age, all of this conflict comes out as anger. All of this internal conflict, no matter what the feeling is inside, and there's a multitude of feelings inside that, that this young boy is struggling with, but they all come out as 
anger. And I think that's one of the most helpful things to understand, especially for mothers, is that it's not that your son is angry all the time. It's that he's feeling all these things, all the things that you would expect him to be feeling in whatever situation, you know, of feeling shame or feeling embarrassed or feeling stupid or feeling whatever. He's feeling all those things, but the only way that he really knows how to express them and the way that they by default most want to come out is anger. And so it gives you really good insight and gives you good patience for helping him dig down further into what the root cause of these things are. It's like, okay, like I know you're really angry right now, but anger is a secondary emotion, right? So so what is it that happened before you became angry that we can that we can start to work through? When this happened, did you feel embarrassed because of that? Yeah. And then that led to the anger. When this happened, did you feel scared? Yes. And then that led to the anger. When this happened, did you feel sad or did you feel did you feel frightened and then you got mad that you were that you were afraid, right? And and especially like I say, this first book is so great for giving you that understanding that at that age for boys, everything that happens just leads to anger. And then as the books go further on, they offer a really, really great look at this progression of him turning from this boy who can't control his emotions and who can't make himself do what he wants to do and only defaults to doing what he doesn't want to do, but it's just what happens anyways because he has no self-control and he has he has no ability to direct his emotions and his anger and even his his physical self, you know, he just has no control to becoming this warrior who is in control and who can choose to sacrifice his feelings and sacrifice his um his instincts for a greater good, right? So they're super, super, super great um, series. Just really, really, really good. Boys and girls would love them. The both the the main characters is Pickett and Heather. Um, so I know I'm obviously focusing on on the boys in this video, uh, but there's great, great character arc for his sister as well. And overall, this series is just you can't you can't go wrong with it. If you especially for um, uh, for wanting to read aloud too. They're really, really good for that. And just if you have kids and you need a good series, get this one. It's great. Um, and then the final one is my current <laughs> favorite kid series of all time, which is the Wing Feather Saga. This is definitely a, for a little bit older age than the Green Ember. There is still tons of... Um, I mean, there's real stuff in the Green Ember, like they're fighting and they're dying and whatever, but it's also animals. And so it just it just hits a little bit different. Wing Feather is actual kids um, that are that are going and the stakes are very real and the books are pretty thick and they get way thicker. The last book, I think, is about twice the size of this one. There's four books in this series. Um, but this series, the thing that I loved about this is that this series shows so well the the weight of the responsibility of a firstborn son. So I am the third in our family, but I am the firstborn son. And even with that, even having two older sisters, because I'm the firstborn son, I like I joke and call them my little big sisters, right? Because even though they're older than me, I still take this protective roll over them and still want to lead and be the head of the siblings and still feel a responsibility to protect them just like I would if they were my little sisters. And the characters in this book are great. There are There's an older brother, a middle brother, and then a little sister. But especially for the understanding of the oldest brother and what it looks like to be the firstborn son and the weight of responsibility that the firstborn son has to, to protect and and take care of his siblings, this book is just, oh, they're so good. They're so good. If you want to understand what it's like to be a firstborn son, these books, they're just, they're just amazing. So these would give you incredible insight into the weight that your son carries and the responsibility that he feels because of the position that he's in. These are also one of the best stories of all time. It's my favorite kid series, hands down. I love this more than Narnia, if that means anything to most people. So um, yeah, get this series. You will not regret it, I guarantee you. 
Uh, so yeah, so those are the fiction ones. When it comes to nonfiction, the first place that I would start is going to be Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. This is one of my favorite books on manhood ever, and it is probably the best overarching view of how God has wired the male heart. And there are there are aspects where it certain things are going to be more or less important or prevalent per man, right? And per personality that God has that God has given your son, but overall I I think this book does an incredible job detailing in general these are the themes of the male heart and every male heart responds to these things and aches for these things and desires these things and this book is like the the non-fiction look at what call of the wild is talking about which is is just this idea of there's this thing innate in men that drives us to wild places and that drives us to prove ourselves and that drives us to 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 violence and to just hard things, right? And so much of what John talks about, one of my favorite ideas from this was when you look at the creation story, it's this idea that God created man in the wilderness and then put him in the garden and then created woman in the garden. But man was placed in the garden, which means he was made outside of it. And so there's this this overarching drive in all men to be part of that wildness. And so this book, I think, gives an incredible look. It's not perfect. A bunch of people will get all rah, 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 that like, oh, this, you know, it's like the problems in this book. It's not perfect. No book is perfect. Okay, let's just easy on that. Um, but it is incredibly useful for understanding how God has wired men's hearts. And I think this book is a must read for every man and definitely for um, any mom wanting to raise boys well. The next nonfiction one that I have is Are My Kids on Track? This book is one of the best parenting books around, um, so you should get it and read it regardless of if you have a son or a daughter. But one of the things that is super helpful with this is it will give you a ton of grace for one, choosing to look at the more important uh, milestones and markers. And this is a, are my kids on track, but it's 12 emotional, social, and spiritual milestones your child needs to reach. This is actual real things that make your child a good adult. And these are the milestones that you need to look for. And one of the best things that this book does is explain the differences between boys and girls and how they develop into these milestones and how these traits present themselves inside of boys versus girls. And one of the things that is that is hugely a problem right now in our in our current culture is this idea that we look at boys and we think boys are just misbehaving girls. And we try to get them to behave more like girls and like how we want girls to behave. And that is the completely wrong way to go about <laughs> raising boys um, because we are fundamentally different and need different things and act in different ways than girls do. And this book gives incredible insight into both genders, but specifically into boys and into how you can you can look for some of these things in different ways inside of your sons than you would see inside of your daughters. And so this book I think is a must read for every parent, but especially great for moms trying to raise boys. And then the final one is another one of my favorite manhood books of all time. And that is the five masculine instincts. This is deep. This is a book, not about boys. This is a book about men and how to become a better man. I don't know if I would say that every mother should have to read this book or that every wife should have to read this book, but it, it gives an incredibly helpful insight into, again, the, that big picture wiring of men, but in the sense of the wiring in men that drives them to make bad decisions these five instincts that he talks about are the things that drive us to make poor decisions and to make decisions that end up ruining our lives and the things that we need to do instead in order to become better men and to submit ourselves more to the character building that God's trying to do inside of us. So many men's books are focused on external 
things and what does it look like to be a man and how I dress and in how I act and how I walk and whatever. This book is all about internal work and what do we need to do to come against these internal instincts that we have. Um, like one of them is, is ambition, right? And going after all this stuff and thinking that we can have everything and that we can do everything and blah, blah, blah. The counter to that is embracing Sabbath and embracing doing less than what we're capable of doing and embracing taking a rest and trusting God to be God and trusting that the world is going to continue moving along even when we aren't the ones out here spinning and working and, and, and making it happen. And so this book is not for young boys, but super helpful in understanding the ways that men are driven to make bad decisions <laughs> and how you can counter that. And so that's definitely one that I would for sure recommend for raising good boys into real men. Um, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you know a mom or have a mom, <laughs> send them this video and, uh, and yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what your favorite books are. I'm always looking for good books for myself and for Kim on raising kids in general. And yeah, let me know if you've read any of these. I would love to hear your thoughts on them and yeah, happy mother's day. I hope you have a great one and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.